sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield, the only cigarette in America to give you premium quality in both regular and king size, brings you Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a narcotics detail. You get a report that high-grade heroin is being sold in your city. The key men in the operation are well hidden. You have no leads to their identity. Your job? Stop them. These are the reasons thousands are changing to Chesterfield and why you should change to Chesterfield today. Only Chesterfield gives you scientific facts in support of smoking. Only Chesterfield names its ingredients, ingredients that give you the best possible smoke. Only Chesterfield gives you premium quality in both regular and king size. That means king size Chesterfield contains tobacco of better quality and higher price than any other king size cigarette. It's the same fine tobacco as in regular Chesterfield. And there's enough to give you more than a one-fifth longer smoke. Yes, more than a fifth longer smoke from king-size Chesterfield. So remember, Chesterfield is the only cigarette to give you premium quality in both regular and king-size. Buy them either way you like them. Premium quality Chesterfield. And much milder. <laughs> Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, August 3rd. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of narcotics detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Kearney. My name's Friday. It was 9.37 a.m. when we got to the main jail. Felony section. Hi, John. Friday, Smith. Who do you want? Anderson, 302. Anderson, 302, interview. How's he feeling this morning, John? I don't know. I just checked in a while ago. I heard he gave the fellows some trouble early this morning. Guess it's pretty rocky. Hi, Anderson. What do you guys want? I want to talk to you. Down this way, Anderson. Hope you guys know I don't feel so good. Terrible night. I hope I never have to go through any more of them. Yeah. You gonna do something about it? What do you mean? You're gonna get me out of here. Let me shove off. You know better than that, Anderson. Yeah. Should have known. You guys don't care. You just don't know. I didn't hear. Sit down. You guys gotta do something for me, though. I can't take much more of it. Can't you talk to the doctor? Have him give me something. He, he's got it. Just a little bit. I tell you, I'm sick. We'll have the doctor give you some medicine, Anderson. A couple things we want to check with you. You know what I need. It ain't medicine. Can't we do this later? I tell you, I don't feel good. Can't you talk to the doctor? Your book is Fred J. Anderson. That's your true name? Yeah. Fred J. Anderson. What's the J stand for? You have to know. We do. Jeremiah, my father's name. You have any other names? What do you mean? You use any aliases? No, not. Any nicknames? No. You drive a car? Yeah. 49 Ford Convert. Who holds the pink slip on it? I do. You own it outright? Yeah, look, do we have to go through that whole thing? Can't you ask me later? You guys don't believe me, but you're going to find out when I keel over. You'll know that. What color's the car? Maroon. You know the license number? No. Where have you lived before? Before what? You gave the address of 10624 Ivorine Avenue. That's what we have here. Hollywood, is that right? Yeah, that's where I live. You belong to any lodges, anything like that? No. You ever in the armed services? No. No serial number, no branch. Now, look, how about knocking this off? I'm getting tired of you guys leaning on me. You drag me in here, ask a lot of questions. I tell you I don't feel good, you don't believe me. Leave me alone. 
Let me go back to my cell. Huh? As soon as I feel better, I'll answer all your questions. We got a job to do, Anderson. We didn't build this thing. You knew what had happened when you started. Now, what's your draft number? I don't know. Did you register? Sure. Draft card in your wallet? Yeah. Then we can get it. You married? No, not now. You were, though, huh? Yeah, a couple of years ago. It didn't work. Bud was too nosy. Always wanted to know what I was doing. Always asking questions. Have any kids? No. What's your wife's name? Adelaide. How do you spell that? Uh, A-D-E-L-A-D-E. Adelaide Morton. Lousiest two years I ever spent. Where'd she live? I don't know. Lost track. Where did she live? Same place up on Ivory. And I moved out when we got the divorce. I haven't seen her since. May still be there for all I know. How about your nearest living relative? Yeah, how about him? Maybe you got things wrong, Anderson. You're booked in here on a narcotics charge. That's pretty serious. This isn't a game. The sooner you realize it, the better off you're going to be. All right. Nearest relative. My brother lives in St. Paul. I don't know the address. I got it at home. We don't agree on a lot of things. I haven't seen him for a year or so. What's his name? Henry Alton Anderson. That's your nearest relative? That's what I said. Anybody else? No. How about your friends? Who are they? That's the line. What? That's where I stop answering these questions. You can maybe tie a bum rap on me, but you ain't going to get my friends mixed up in it. No, sir. That's where I draw the line. All right. Suit yourself, Anderson. We've got a lot of time. Got a cigarette, Joe? Yeah. Here you are. Thanks. Anderson? No. Thanks. Yeah. Why well, you have to know who my friends are? For a lot of reasons. I don't want to embarrass them, that's all. I don't want them to have to answer a lot of silly questions. You can see that, can't you? Can't you? Yeah, Anderson, we don't need to embarrass anybody. We just thought it would help here. Well, I won't tell you. I don't feel well. I don't feel well at all. I'm not hooked anyway. You got no right to say that. Look at your arm. I ain't going to try to cut you. Sure, I, I tried this stuff once or twice, but that don't mean I'm hooked. A couple of pops, that's all, just a couple of times. That's not the way your arm makes it look. You've almost run out of places to put that needle, haven't you? So maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was a couple of more times than I thought. All right, now, look, Anderson, I'm going to lay this out for you. We know there's a lot of H floating around. Has been for the past three months, and it's high grade. We know that you and the bunch you work for aren't too choosy who you sell it to. Now, we want the names and where you're getting the stuff. You say you're sick now. Wait a few more hours. Wait till your stomach starts to turn over. Wait till you can't make your hands do what you want them to. Wait till your head starts to crack open. You'll feel different then. We can wait. Come on, let's take him back, Frank. Come on. Wait a minute. Yeah? You gonna take me back to the cell? You called it. I don't want to go back in. Well, that's where you're going. You gonna call the doctor, tell him to take care of me? He knows already. He'll do what he can. I can't go that route. You know that. Iron cure, I couldn't take it. It'd kill me. You should have thought of that a long time ago. Yeah, you can say that. You ain't got the habit. It's easy for you to say that. You don't know. All right, let's go. No, I want you got to do something. I told you we'd do what we could. That ain't enough. It'll have to do. I, I told you, help me out. Give me a hand, then I'll get over on your side. You know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. All right, tell us where you're getting the stuff. Can't you help me out first? The doctor will see you. Okay. Where do you want me to start? Where do you get the stuff? From a guy. What's his name? Paul. Paul what? I don't know what his last name is, just Paul. Where do you meet him? Hollywood. That's a big place. Where in Hollywood? Different places. Sometimes the corner of Hollywood and Vine, sometimes at Highland, once at Cherokee and Sunset, different places. How do you know where? He gets word to me. How? Guy tells me Paul wants to see me, that's all. What does Paul look like? Big guy, real big. What does he look like? How tall is he? Six, two or three, maybe 250. What's his coloring? Dark. Looks like he's just come back from the beach. Looks real tan. You guys are going to help me out, aren't you, after all I've done? What color is his hair? Black, curly black hair. How about it? You going to do me some good? Any marks or scars on him? Huh? This Paul, any marks or scars on him that'll make him easier to spot? Yeah, he's got a scar across the bridge of his nose right here. How old is he? Oh, I guess about 38, maybe 40. Drive a car, do you know? Never saw one. He always walked up on me. Is he a user? I don't think so. Maybe Joy pops once in a while. I don't think he's on his study, though. Is he the boss? Huh? He the head man in the operation? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I think he's just one of the guys. Where'd you meet him? Bar, downtown. Were you introduced? No, he just came up and started to talk to me. We got along, made a deal. I was around trying to make a buy, get a connection. All right. I want you to look at some pictures. See if you can point this fellow Paul out for us. Look, I've done my part. I told you, now you guys got a chit to pick up. When do I get to see the doctor? When are you going to fix me? We'll up? talk to him. That wasn't a deal. We made no deals. You said you'd give me a hand. We will. The doctor will do everything he can for you. We can't promise you any more than that. Not much. That's the way it is. Lousy deal. Everything's on your side. You know it and you sure right it. Someday I'll learn it. Just don't pay. Yeah, what's that? Never scratch a cop's back. 10.46 a.m. We returned Fred Anderson to his cell and called a doctor for him. 
For the past four and a half months, an organized gang had been selling high-grade heroin. From our informants, we learned that the drug was being made available to anyone who could pay the price. When we tried to stop the activities of the gang, we found ourselves up one blind alley after another. None of the buys we arranged took place. Meets with the higher-ups failed to materialize. When Fred Anderson was picked up, the narcotics found on his person was of the same quality and type that was being pushed around town. 2.34 p.m. We picked up Anderson and took him to the city hall to look at the mug books. He failed to identify any of the pictures. We checked the description of Paul against the people known to have dealt in narcotics, but failed to come up with an identification. Anderson was returned to his cell and held pending trial for violation of the State Narcotics Act, a felony. 4.17 p.m. We checked back into Captain Kearney's office. That's it, Skipper. We're right back where we were four months ago. Nothing at all on this, Paul, huh? Well, if there is, we haven't been able to find it. You think Anderson's telling everything he knows about it? No, oh, I doubt it. No, well, that description would fit a hundred guys. You got any ideas of where we go from here? Well, yeah, maybe. It might not work, but it's someplace to start. Well, let's hear it. All right, can we take a look at the map over here? From the information we got, the main operation must be taking place someplace down around here, around the harbor area. Yeah. From what we hear, the stuff's there, all right. Problem is how to find a connection. Well, maybe if we just lose a man down there, we thought. Put a man down there and let him work on his own. He might be able to come up with some answers. Pretty risky, Joe. That's a rough place. I wonder if it'd be worth risking a man down there. I don't think we got much of a choice, Skipper. No. Well, we figured that maybe if I went down there and let it get around that I wanted to make a buy, a big one, maybe they'd come to me. Why you? Why not let me handle it? Well, I thought that's the way we figured it. They know you down there. You used to work that area. You're not in any better position, Joe. Fellas walking the streets down there that you've tangled with, they're not about to form any fan clubs for you. Well, we've tried every other way. Informants, leads, every known pusher's been talked to. Still, the stuff keeps coming in, being sold. From where we sit, this looks like one way to get them. All right, how are you going to work it? Well, I figure maybe I'll check into some hotel down there, eat in the places in the neighborhood, be seen around the bars, let it get around that I'm here from San Francisco, want to make a buy, and we'll see what happens. You know anything about San Francisco? Well, I know the place pretty well. I spent a couple years up there when I was in the Army. I still don't like this idea of not being able to tag you, though. Well, there's no other way. I suppose so. How are we going to know how you're making out? Well, I'll get word whenever I can, let you know before the buy, tell you where and when. All right, Joe, you bought a piece of it. I'm not going to tell you what to do, you know, but take it easy. Don't make a target out of yourself. Remember, keep in touch with us. Right, Skipper. Let us know as much as you can, huh? Yeah. Take it easy, huh, Joe? Don't want anything to happen to you. Yeah, well, I'm on your side there. August 4th, 8.35 a.m. Frank and I had identification made up bearing the name Joe Arnold. After a final talk with Captain Kearney, I went home, got my car, and left for San Pedro. 6.42 p.m. I checked into a hotel on 6th Street. The hotel, according to the information we had obtained, was near the narcotics distribution center. 8.12 p.m. I went next door to the bar. Yeah? Give me a beer, huh? Eastern? I don't care. Okay. That'll be 30 cents. All right. There you go. Thanks. Not much doing, huh? No, it's pretty early yet. It's a little frantic later. Mm-hmm. You're around here, aren't you? Yeah, I was just down from San Francisco. Mm, nice town. I was up there a couple of years ago. Spent a week. Sure like it. Yeah, it's a good place to live. Mm, sure seems to be. You know, if I could get a job up there, I think I'd move up. Yeah? Hey, slide down, huh? We can talk while I clean up these glasses. Well, that is, if you don't mind talk. No, oh, it's all right. Glasses. Seems like you never get them done. Yeah. You down here on business? Well, I guess you could say that. Uh-huh. Sort of combined, huh? Yeah. And now look at that. What's that? I spent half the day slicing these oranges for old-fashioned, and then people don't eat them. <laughs> A lot of weight in motion. Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, what line of business you in? Nothing special. Just moving around. Wherever I can make a buck, I stop. They should have to call me a promoter, I guess. Is that what you put down your income tax returns? What? You know, when you fill out your income tax, it says there how you make your living. What do you put that? Business management. That's good. Business management. Whose business you manage? Mostly my own. Pretty good idea for everybody, isn't it? <laughs> Three weeks passed. I spent some time in most of the local bars and eating places. On occasion, I'd see other officers from the narcotics detail up in L.A. On each of these meetings, I'd have to pass them by and hope that they wouldn't show any evidence that they knew me. During the three weeks, I became friendly with the bartender 
and in the course of many conversations, I let it be known that I was in town hoping to make a substantial narcotics buy. At first, he appeared only mildly interested, but then he began to ask more and more questions about my background and about the people I knew in San Francisco. Friday, August 27th, 9.31 p.m. All right, Joe, I'll go to the battle. I'm moving around. That's about all I can say. Hey, you want a beer? Yeah, fine. Here's your 30 cents. Oh, not tonight, Joe. It's on the house. Why? What's the occasion? I got some good news for you, Joe. Yeah? Yeah, I got a friend I want you to meet. I think he can help you make a connection. Yeah? Where is he? No, look, I'm not promising anything, Joe. The guy knows some people and might be able to help you. Well, why are you so interested? Well, I figure maybe I can make a buck or two. Mm-hmm. All right. Is the guy here now? Yeah. He's back there in the end booth. See? Is the other guy? Uh, well, that helps. Which one is your friend? The big one. You know, the fellow with the gray suit on. Scar over his nose. Gray suit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I see him. Come on, I'll take you back. All right. Nice guy, Joe. You'll like him. Well, what'd you tell him? Well, just that you were here from Frisco. Said you were interested in the connection, but the deal was good. Uh-huh. You make your own deal. Now, look, I got nothing to do with that. You'll really like him. Paul? Yeah? This is the guy I was telling you about, Joe Arnold. This is Paul Ginner. Oh, hi, Joe. Sit down. Bring us another round, will you? Yeah, right away, Paul. You know what you want? Make it snappy, huh? Yeah, right away. Beer, scotch, and soda, and old-fashioned Irish whiskey. Yeah, that's right. Leave the garbage out of the old-fashioned. Yeah. Here, sit down, Joe. Yeah, thank you. This Jack Potter. You two ought to know each other. All right? Yeah, he's from Frisco, too. You are listening to Dragnet. The authentic story of your police force in action. Now, a report every smoker should hear. Only Chesterfield gives you scientific facts in support of smoking. First such report ever published about any cigarette. A responsible consulting organization reports a study by a competent medical specialist and staff on the effects of smoking Chesterfields. For six months, a group of men and women smoked only Chesterfield, 10 to 40 a day, their normal amount. 45% of the group have smoked Chesterfields from 1 to 30 years for an average of 10 years each. At the beginning and end of the six months, each smoker was given a thorough examination, including x-rays and covering the sinuses, nose, ears, and throat. After a thorough examination of every member of this group, the medical specialist stated, It is my opinion that the ears, nose, throat, and accessory organs of all participating subjects examined by me were not adversely affected in the six months period by smoking the cigarettes provided. Of course, these cigarettes were Chesterfields. Remember this report and buy Chesterfields, either way you like them, regular or king size. Premium quality Chesterfield and much milder. In normal undercover work, the police officer is in constant touch with the men working with him. This is done either by one officer trailing the undercover man or by phone calls to a fellow officer at appointed times. Rarely does the working detective put himself in the position where he doesn't have constant contact with the men he works with. However, in this instance, it appeared to be the only way information and evidence could be obtained. Friday, August 27th, 10.46 p.m. The bartender brought the drinks. Paul Getter and Jack Potter started asking the questions. From Frisco, huh? Yeah, I'm from San Francisco. Jack and I do some business together, real estate. That's so? Here you're in the management business, huh? The bartender talks a lot, don't he? He knows who to talk to. Tells me you're down here on business. Yeah. Where do you live up north? Hyde, near Taylor. I used to live around there. Is that right? Yeah. Have you ever finished that work they were doing at the corner of 3rd and Market? What's that? Well, the construction they were doing at 3rd and Market. You know, that new dime store, they get it finished? Yeah, they got it finished. It's not at 3rd and Market. Now, what's this all about, Ginter? What are you trying to prove? What? You got any questions to ask about me? Ask me. Don't ask your boy to do it here. You want to check up on me? Talk to somebody who's in San Francisco now. Have them check around. It's all there. I got no worries. When you two get tired of playing games, let me know. I got no time for them now. I'll see you around. Sit down, Arnold. Yeah? Now, read it any way you want. You say you want to do business, I'm your boy. We gotta be sure. I can't take any chances. Cops are dying to find out. Can't let that happen, you know. Yeah, well, if you're ready to talk a deal, let's get to it, huh? You figure to do this business in Frisco? San Francisco, yeah, that's where I figure to work. You're out of your mind. That town's tied in a drum. Nobody can get under the lid. Now, you look, I don't ask you where you get your real estate. Don't tell me how to manage my business. 
I want to make an investment for a client. I got ten grand. That'll buy a whole tract of your lots now. Are they for sale or not? It's that simple. Well, now, you're in kind of a hurry, ain't you? I've been here for three weeks. I don't want to spend any more time than I have to. When can I make the buy? Tell you what, let's take a tour of the town, meet some friends of mine, then we can talk about it. No need to be in a hurry. I got to see it first. I want to make sure it's the same stuff I heard about. Where'd you hear? A few rumbles around. High-grade stuff. That's what I want. Let's go. Can't you call this friend? I don't want to go traipsing all over town. He moves around. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find. Besides, it serves two purposes. What's that? Give you a chance to meet some people. Once you get to know the town, you won't be in such a hurry to get away. There's just one thing. Maybe I won't like your friends. More important. Yeah? Maybe they won't like you. For the next three hours, Ginter, Potter, and I visited almost every bar, nightclub, and coffee stand in the area. At each of the places, Ginter would ask for a man named Ainley. When he was told that Ainley wasn't in, we'd sit and have a drink. Ginter would call as many people as he knew over to the table, introduce them to me, and then before we left, he'd hold a conference with them at their tables. At several of the places, I saw men who I knew were involved in the narcotics trade, but none of them happened to be close to Ginter. It was obvious what Ginter was trying to do. He was checking me with the people in the business to see if any of them could recognize me or could give them any information about me. Saturday morning, August 28th, 3.14 a.m. We stopped for breakfast. Here, you want some sugar? No, I take it by. Okay, how about you, Jack? Yeah, thanks. Looks like it might have been a wild goose chase, huh? I don't know where Ainley could be. Why don't you come off of this, Skinner? Yeah, what do you mean? I'm not a new boy. You're about as subtle as a bulldozer. What's the scoop here? Your friends tell you anything about me? I don't know what you're talking about. Just looking for Ainley. It's as phony as that look you got on your face now. How about it? Do I make the buy or don't I? All right, you make the buy. When? You got the money? I'll have it when the buy comes off. Ten thousand. That's right. Okay, you can pick up the stuff tomorrow night. <laughs> a.m., Ginter outlined the plan for the buy. At 7.30 that night, I was to meet him on the corner of Lebanon and Spring Streets. He'd take me to Ainley, who had the plan. 5.29 a.m., I drove back to Los Angeles. I put in a call to Frank Smith at his home and filled him in on the developments. It was arranged for me to be spotted when I got to the corner and then to be followed until the buy was made. At that time, Frank and the other officers working with him would move in and take Ginter and Ainley. I told Frank that I'd leave my car at the corner of 6th and Spring at noon that day. At that time, he would place a briefcase on the back seat of the car. In the briefcase would be packages of cut newspaper with a few $10 bills attached to each stack on the outside. I checked into a hotel down on 5th and got some sleep. At 7.30 p.m. August 28th, I was at the corner of Spring in Lebanon. Hi, Arnold. Hello, Gettard. Where do we go? You got the money? In this case here. Where's your car? Lot around the corner. We have to drive to the meet? Yeah. Come on, this way. My car's just around the corner. Don't worry, we'll take mine. All right, no problem. Makes it nice. Here we are. Want to slide in this side? Be quicker. All right. Where do we have to go? It's not far. How come we didn't make the deal in Pedro? Haney likes to do the big business up here. More people, easier cover. Mm Mm-hmm. When we first pulled away from the curb, I thought I could make out Frank and Captain Kearney in back of us. We drove for about an hour. Ginter cut down every side street in the area. Every place he drove, he kept his eye on the rearview mirror. I was afraid he'd make the tail. He drove out Sunset Boulevard and back down Wilshire, down Spring and over to Hope Street. Along the way, I lost sight of Frank and Captain Kearney. Finally, at 8.36, we pulled up at the corner of Spring and Lebanon. What's the deal, Ginter? This is where we started. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we didn't have a tail. You satisfied now? Yeah. Come on in here. This hotel here? Mm Mm-hmm. Ainley do business in a rat trap like this? He works where he has to. Come on, it's on the second floor. We can walk. You sure this is the same stuff that I heard about? You'll see. Understand I'm not buying any junk. Don't worry. What we got's good. It's down here. Come in. Hello, Mr. Ainley. Mr. Ginner? This the young man? Yes, sir. This is Mr. Arnold, Mr. Anley. How are you? Do you have the money, young man? Yeah, it's in here. You got the stuff? I have, here in this case. Looks like a doctor's bag. It's a good place to carry it. Doctor's bag. Here, open a bundle yourself. High grade, best we can get. Yeah, it looks all right. Fine. Now, if we could have the money. Here you are. Now, if it's all right with you, I'll get out of here now. We'd like you to wait until we count the money. It's all there. I don't doubt it, young man, but just to make sure so there'll be no repercussions later, you understand? Mm Mm-hmm. Everything looks in order. What are you trying to pull? What do you mean? 
What is this, Ginter? What's the matter? There's nothing but paper, plain newspaper. All right, Arnold, make a move or kill you. Let me see. What are you trying to pull? All right, you're under arrest, both of you. Cop, lousy cop. That's right. You got the shoe on the wrong foot, cop. I'm telling you what to do. There's men all through this building. You won't make the front door. How about it, Mr. Ainley? Let's take him down to Pedro. We can get rid of him there. It'll be better. How about the rest of them? He's bluffing. You made sure you weren't followed, didn't you? Yeah, I think so. Did you or didn't you? Yeah. Then there's nothing to worry about. Let's go. Well, you heard him, Arnold. Whatever your name is. Yeah. Let's walk down. Not too fast. I'm parked out front. Good. Right, this is far enough. Come on, don't stall. Don't cause any trouble. You won't make it. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Come on. Now move, move. All right, down these stairs. Smith, cover the other side. Yeah. Walker, block off that end of the hall. Right, Captain. You all right, Friday? Yeah, fine. Watch that guy, Frank. I got him. Hold it up, mister. You're not going any place. Fool, you stupid fool. Get her. Can't even lose a tail. Okay. Both of you. Hands behind your back. I told you to make sure you weren't followed. I told you. I lost him. I know I did. I tell you, I lost him. All right, let's go. Come on, let's move. You didn't lose him. Just an up talk. Come on. Those guys never learn, do they, Frank? What do you mean? Well, they keep lying right up to the finish, don't they? How's that? Well, get her and there. They'll be arguing all the way downtown about them losing you when you were tailing us. Shouldn't be any argument, Joe. We lost you someplace along Wilshire. But you got here, all right. I thought this is the way you played it. No, we just took a guess you might come back to your car. Yeah, well, it's a pretty good guess for me, anyway. Why, we'd have gotten them sooner or later. The story you have just heard was true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 9th, trial was held in Department 92, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Veneman. Friends, I have just enough time to remind you that Chesterfield is the first cigarette to name all its ingredients. First to give you premium quality in both regular and king size. And first to give you scientific facts in support of smoking. I believe you should change to Chesterfields, either way you like them, regular or king size. And do it today. Paul Robert Ginter and James Arthur Ainley were tried and convicted of violation of the State Narcotic Act, a felony. They received sentences as prescribed by law. Violation of the State Narcotic Act, a felony, is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not more than six years. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next seven years of bigger and bigger enrollments, America's grade schools will need nearly a quarter of a million extra teachers besides those to fill normal vacancies. This great need, plus the growing public interest in education and improvements in schools, make elementary school teaching a more rewarding career than ever, a career that high school and college students should certainly consider. Education holds America's future, perhaps your future. <laughs> You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Whit Connor, Harry Bartell, Lee Marvin. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Sound off for Chesterfield. Either way you like them, regular or king size, Chesterfield gives you the best possible smoke. Much milder Chesterfield. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet transcribed from Los Angeles. <laughs>